Sriman Daulat Rao Sindhya was the king of Gwalior state in central India from 1794 until his death in 1827. His reign coincided with struggles for supremacy within the Maratha Confederacy, and with Maratha resistance to the consolidation of British hegemony over northern and central India in the early 18th century. Daulatrio played a significant role in the Second and Third Anglo-Maratha Wars. Ascent of Sindhias Daulatrio was a member of the Sindhya dynasty, and succeeded to the Gwalior throne in 12 February 1794 at the age of 15, upon the death of Maharaja Mahaji Sindhya. Daulatrio was recognized and formally installed by the Peshwa, the 3rd of March 1794, and conferred the titles of Akal al-Mutlaq, Amir al-Umara from Emperor Shah Alam II in 10 May 1794. Gwalior state was part of the Maratha Empire, which was founded by Shivaji in the 17th century. De facto control of the empire passed from Shivaji's successes to the hereditary chief ministers of the empire. Entitled Peshwas and the empire expanded greatly in the 18th century at the expense of the Mughal Empire. As the empire expanded, commanders of the Maratha armies were given authority to collect chort in the conquered territories on behalf of the Peshwa. Daulatrio's ancestor Ranoji Sindhya had conquered territories in the Malwa and Gurd regions from the Mughals, eventually establishing a state which was initially based at Ujjain, but was named after the strategic fortress of Gwalior. His wife Bijabai was a powerful and an intelligent lady of her time. She played an important role in the affairs of the Gwalior state. The Maratha defeat at the Third Battle of Panipat checked the Maratha expansion towards the northwest, and hastened the decentralization of power in the empire to a Pentarchy, made up of the five most powerful Maratha dynasties, the Peshwas of Pune, the Sindhias of Gwalior, the Holkars of Indore, the Bonesals of Nagpur, and the Gakwads of Baroda. Daulatrio's predecessor Srinath Mahaji had, in the aftermath of Panipat, turned Gwalior into a chief military power of the Confederacy, developing a well-trained modern army under the command of Benoit de Boyne. Daulatrio therefore looked upon himself less as a member of the Maratha Confederacy and more as the chief sovereign in India. Sindhya Holka Confrontation At this time the death of the young Peshwa, Madhavrao II, and the troubles which it occasioned, the demise of Tuko Jirao Holka and the rise of the turbulent Yashwan Trao Holka, together with the intrigues of Nanifarnavish threw the confederacy into confusion and enabled Sindhya to gain the ascendancy. He also came under the influence of Sarjareo Gatka, a dubious character from Maratha point of view, whose daughter he had married. Urged possibly by this advisor, Daulatrio aimed at increasing his dominions at all costs, and seized territory from the Maratha Pon wars of Dharanduas. The rising power of Yashwan Treo Holka of Indore, however, alarmed him. In July 1801, Jashwan Treo appeared before Sindhya's capital of Ujjain, and after defeating some battalions under John Hessing, extorted a large sum from its inhabitants, but did not ravage the town. In October, however, Sarjareo Gakka took revenge by sacking Indore, raising it almost to the ground, and practicing every form of atrocity on its inhabitants. Then, in 1802, on the festival of Diwali, Jashwan Treo Holka defeated the combined armies of Sindhya and Peshwa Bajareo II at Hadapsair, near Pune. The battle took place at Gorpadi, Banwadi, and Hadapsair. From this time dates the Gadi Kar Wakt, or period of unrest, as it is still called, during which the whole of central India was overrun by the armies of Sindhya and Holka and their attendant predatory Pandari bands, under Amir Khan and others. Benoit de Boyne had retired as commander of Gwalior's army in 1796, and his successor, Pierre Killier Perrin, was a man of a very different stamp whose determined favoritism of French officers, in defiance of all claims to promotion, produced discontent in the regular corps. Sindhya-British Treaty 
Finally, on December 31, 1802, the Peshwa signed the Treaty of Bassein, by which the British were recognized as the paramount power in India. The continual evasion shown by Sindhya in all attempts at negotiation brought him into conflict with the British, and his power in both western and northern India was brought down by the British victories at Ahmednagar, Assay, Battle of Argaon, Osayagar and Laswari. On December 30, 1803, he signed the Treaty of Surja and Jang Ao, by which he was obliged to give up his possessions between the Yamuna and the Ganges, the district of Baruch, and other lands in the south of his dominions, and soon after, by the Treaty of Burhanpur, he agreed to maintain a subsidiary force to be paid for out of the revenues of territory ceded by the treaty. By the ninth article of the Treaty of Surja and Jang Ao he was deprived of the fortresses of Gwalior and Gohad. The discontent produced by the last condition almost caused a rupture, and did actually result in the plundering of the residence camp and detention of the resident as a prisoner. In 1805, under the new policy of Lord Cornwallis, Gohad and Gwalior were restored, and the Chumbal River was made the northern boundary of the state. While certain claims on Rajput states were abolished, the British government at the same time binding itself to enter into no treaties with Udaipur, Jodhpur, Qatar, or any chief tributary to Sindhya in Malwa, Mewa, or Marwar. In 1811, Shremaint Dalit Rao conquered the neighbouring kingdom at Chanderi. In 1816 Sindhya was called on to assist in the suppression of the Pindarus. For some time it was doubtful what line he would take, but he ultimately signed the Treaty of Gwalior in 1817 by which he promised full cooperation. He did not, however, act up to his professions, and connived at the retention of the fort of Asayagar, which had been ceded by the treaty. A fresh treaty in 1818 affected a readjustment of boundaries, Ajma and other lands being ceded. 